Understand that if active duty military actually get deployed within the United States, that weapon is not just pointed at other people, other countries. It's pointed at you. If you do not get in your house when I tell you to, you become the enemy. Martial law. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. What you just saw, there was a video of a female member of our military sharing with total impunity her bloodlust fantasies about gunning down American citizens. And you can dress it up any way you want to, but that's what that was. Like, that's why she posted it. She didn't want to explain martial law. She wasn't trying to give people a heads up or something. No, she was getting off on public displays of her self-perceived power over people like you. So we're going to analyze this for a little bit before diving into what we really have to talk about, which is whether it's still a good idea to join the military. Because you look at this woman, and she truly has as the phenotype of the overbearing, scorned, androgynously feminine, power-thirsty woman. You can see it in her face, you hear it in her voice, and our military is increasingly being filled with people like that and increasingly purged of normal American patriots, and that could potentially lead to catastrophe for obvious reasons, uh, because as our libertarian friends will remind us, the state has a total monopoly on violence, which is true. So what's going to happen when the state, which is already hostile quite openly towards people like us, what's going to happen when the enforcement of that state, the military, is predominantly occupied by people who are equally, if not even more hostile towards people like us? Like us. What's that going to look like? I'll tell you this, and we all know it's true. I've never met someone who looked like that who was not mentally and spiritually ill. People like that woman are basically amoral. They've been traumatized. They have a lot of hatred within themselves towards the people they perceive to be evil, namely white men, because of daddy issues, poor experiences with boyfriends, etc. And that's even before we take into account that these people have been spoon-fed state-sponsored propaganda against America, against American patriots, etc. for virtually their entire lives. And people like her are literally just waiting for the green light. You can see it in her face. She knows that martial law would never be declared to serve the interests of American patriots. She knows that if it were declared, it would be to target American patriots. It would be at the expense of American patriots, and that's what she's fantasizing about. There's nothing more dangerous than bitter feminine energy in a position of power. There's nothing more dangerous than that because it is entirely driven and governed by emotional processes that are unstable and impulsive. And if she's convinced that you're the reason that she's miserable, she'll just be looking for permission to kill you. And I know we're probably thinking right now, like, good luck, come and take it. I get that. I'm not saying that she's actually a threat or competence or anything like that. I'm just saying what worries me is how many of these types of people you're not seeing, how they can act with impunity, how the rhetoric of the state and its military are approaching where they would need to be for something really bad to happen to people like us. That's the point of this. Am I scared of some bitch in fatigues? No. But what does scare me is an army of mentally ill people because there's no way to reason with them. They need to believe what daddy government says about people like us. They need to project their own misery onto people like us. These people are the victims of a society that has been purposefully engineered to breed despair and anxiety as a means to orchestrate mass submission to the established power structures by the masses who require those power structures because they believe them to be necessary to their survival and any chance of relative stability, and the ones who are particularly miserable and brainwashed would not for a second hesitate to open fire on people like us. Not for a second. And I doubt there would be any consequences either, because the higher-ups share the same contempt, but they can't be seen pulling the trigger. The same way that Antifa and Black Lives Matter assault and murder American patriots and nothing is done about it. No arrests are made, no federal police involvement, the mainstream media runs defense for them. The Democrats in Congress run defense for them. Well, they're not actually a group, they're just an idea. Why is that? Because they're glad it's happening but they can't be the ones to do it. So the last thing I want to say before I start telling you what I've learned about the military since speaking with a bunch of you guys who are currently in, who have served before over the last few weeks, um, is that the reason I say this is because a lot of us are probably thinking, well, these people are in the minority. The military is still our guys. They're not going to turn against us. And I get that. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I am simply sharing my observations, but I realized something pretty chilling recently, which is that you hear all this rhetoric from the left about America, our democracy, us. And I've always thought like, who's this us you're talking about? Like what? I kind of just brush it off as like PR strategy. Like, you know how candidates always say, when I win instead of if I win, like the rhetoric is self-affirming. But then I realized that it's actually 100% true if you hear it as predicated on all political dissent completely gone, whether that's silenced, censored, or in those places that they've sent people like us every other time they've taken power. I really can't stress that enough. If it's happened every other time, why would it not happen this time? They're purging the military of patriots, of people who are against the regime, the same way that they've done throughout history. You want the military to be loyal to your regime and destroy those who aren't? Okay, purge it. They know what they're doing. 
Have you soiled yourself yet? Do you need new underwear? I'm actually excited for this product mode because we actually have a new product today and we're excited about it because as you know, the Heck Off Kami sponsor roster is an elite list with like two criteria. It has to be a good product that I actually like and I get to say whatever I want. This is why you don't see me promoting things like supplements and weird services, things that don't even have anything to do with what we talk about and also why sometimes we lose a sponsor when we call out anti-white propaganda and they say, hey, good video, but can you change that comment? you made about the future congressional white caucus no actually and i didn't even think it was that funny but at this point it's on principle that i keep it in so today i am here to tell you that men are being inundated with overpriced boxers designed for testosterone deficient men one brand even going so far as to turn the waistband into a rainbow which i remind you at risk of redundancy is literally gay here at heck off commie we demand more room more room and support where it counts but that's not all i want a quick release fly for a quick draw and this design is actually really good and i'll try to explain why without being too graphic but you know how when you really have to pee, it's difficult to take it out because the joint isn't supposed to be like a socket joint. It's not really designed to go like left and right. It's more of an up and down kind of thing. So you have to like bend over and get it out because the fly is vertical. This one's horizontal. So that ceases to be a problem because they took into account the physics of your pee pee. So that's nice. But there's also a secret pocket in the extra wide waistband for cash, tactical accessories. More importantly, because it's funny to me because women always complain about how they don't have enough pockets in their pants. But the boys are so advanced that we're adding pockets to our underwear. But seriously, you never know, you know, no one's gonna search you there. So if you're ever in a situation where you need a universal handcuff key, a small knife, etc., you'll be good to go. And also, I want the material to be antibacterial, anti-peeling, and moisture wicking, so I stay fresh and dry all day. They have to be durable, fade resistant, shrink resistant, ultra lightweight, and finally, because I'm high maintenance, I want them to be battle tested by special forces and 30% less expensive than the competition. And no woke BS, please, because as we know, it is imperative that we keep everything gay away from that area of our bodies, especially. There's only one brand that can say, of that under tack the only brand that is unapologetically pro-america and pro second amendment and we are happy to add them to the elite list of heck off commie sponsors so go to getundertack.com that's getundertack.com right now as a special introductory offer by three get one free with the offer code doyle that is four pairs for the same price as two from the competition math satisfaction guaranteed or your money back getundertack.com offer code doyle very epic so the question at hand should you still join the military i say still because i presume that we've all explored that possibility at some point or another, especially because, you know, we love our country. Most of us are guys. And the idea of being in the military is basically about as appealing as it can get. Like you're a warrior, you're defending your country with the boys. It's epic. It's exciting. That's the idea of it. But unfortunately, it's not that simple anymore. Maybe it never was, but especially not in recent history, the last 12 years or so in particular. So you might remember a few videos ago, I made a comment, which admittedly was impulsive, that you should not join the military. And after that, a bunch of people reached out to me to talk to me about it. Let me know what their experiences with it have been. So I'd like to retract that now. The rare John Doyle retraction to tell you that I've decided to be very comfortable perched on the fence because I don't know I just I don't know it depends on your own personal value hierarchy but the first thing I want to say is that if you want to join the military mostly because you want to serve your country and be a hero to your country and there are lots of reasons uh, that people join but that's probably the most common and honorable I think I will say that political heroes are just as real as military heroes they're often the same in terms of like cumulative service to the country, I would say at this point, somebody who can break into the system and positively change it in any capacity is a hero. It's a completely different battle, but a battle nonetheless, and frankly, one that's more important to the country than fighting in the sand. So if you wanna serve your country, you're smart, you're capable, I would say we need people like you involved in politics more than the military at this point, to be honest. And there's pros and cons to each. Like the average soldier is more heroic and more of a service to his country than the average political figure by far. But that being said, we really need that handful of figures to to rise up in politics and take this country back and be in charge of that military and use it for good for the national defense and sovereignty instead of guarding poppy fields in Afghanistan. And that's the problem. Like if we wanted to take over these countries, we could. If we wanted to glass them, we could, but we don't. We want a nation build because as we talked about in the last video, the ruling class in this country wants international enforced liberalism. So I guess the first thing to know about is what's referred to as the big green weenie, which is that everybody, no matter what, is going to get screwed over by the military in some capacity. It is inescapable. I heard a story about a guy who wanted to be military police. They said, okay, sign here. He says, okay. They say, actually, no, you're infantry, but we're keeping you for those extra three years you signed on for to be military police, even though you're infantry now. And he's just screwed. So just know that you cannot avoid the big green weenie. It is inevitable. That's just one story I 
heard, but it can be all sorts of different things. The bottom line being that you are going to get screwed at some point. The second thing to know is that the fact that the wars that we're involved in aren't really important or for good cause or about defending American freedom, that really doesn't even matter, which is actually a good thing because the reason it doesn't matter is because 90% of the enlisted guys just want to fight. They don't care who, they just want to fight. If the higher ups declared war on France, they'd be spray painting equipment, getting ready for the battle of Bordeaux, right? That's actually kind of a good thing because you really just want that warrior spirit in your military, following orders, no questions asked, that kind of mentality. But our problem is that the orders are coming from people who work for Satan. So it gets a bit sticky there. But yeah, these guys have told me that they've never even met one person who gives a damn about nation building. So in the enlisted class, about two thirds of these guys are joining because they love their country, because of their heritage. A lot of these guys come from military families and that's something that isn't really discussed too often, but there is something to be said about the epigenetics of the soldier, like how even knights were the sons of knights, etc. Like the people who come from military families literally are built different. They want to fight, it is ingrained in them. And the good news is that 80 to 90% of these guys are instinctively or just straight up right wing, like they're fantasizing about being deployed against Antifa, stuff like that. But that being said, they're not very socially conservative, it's kind of that, you know, like conservatarian warrior class, which is to be expected. I don't have an issue with that. You wouldn't call a Viking a degenerate for getting really drunk and having sex with a bunch of women after conquering a village because he's a Viking and he would collapse your skull. So, hey, no judgment from this guy. Judgment free zone. Planet fitness mode. Good work, soldier. But the officer culture is much different. These guys are going to college. They're getting indoctrinated. They're not like far left radicals, but they're pretty liberal. Like they'll complain about the South being too racist. And it's like, bro, we're at Fort Bragg. This is not even the South yet. Uh, and a lot of the officer types know that they can use that to transition into business or politics or something like that because it looks good on their resume. And if you look at those types of people who advertise their military background, very rarely were they enlisted. They're almost always officers. Um, and it's also worth noting, too, that the Navy and the Air Force at this point are effectively jobs training programs. Um, but really the best part of the military, I've been told, is the fraternity, the relationships that you form with the other guys, the experiences that you share. It's something you'll never forget and that you'll cherish, even though it sucks for the most part. And that's the operative goal of the regime. They want to discourage people who care about this country from joining or staying in the military. And so they're trying to clamp down on the ability of men to have that fraternity fraternal experience. They've brought women in, so it's no longer an all-male sphere, which is really important for facilitating male cooperation and relationships since we get distracted by women. And also, there are just certain things that men did that women did not like, and now they aren't done anymore. One example I heard about was your blood wings. When you would graduate from uh, airborne school in the United States military, they would take the badge and they stick the pin into your skin and they just drive it into your chest. And I've heard that you'll probably have that scar for most of your life, but it's a badge of honor. It's a rite of passage. It is important, but the higher ups don't get it. That's hazing, that's wrong. So they clamped down on it. Women didn't wanna do it. Or even popping tops. If your superior is giving you a hard time, you say, hey, you wanna pop tops? And what that means is let's both take off our tops with our ranks on them so we're equal, and then we'll try to beat the hell out of each other. Oh, but they clamped down on things like that. It's hazing. Everything is much more stringent now. And these are just further attempts to destroy that male sphere, that warrior culture. So I've been told that you can try to get out of it what you can, but rest assured that it is dying in terms of that experience and fraternity. And that, you know, while it's hard to completely kill it forever, it's definitely dying. So here's basically the problem for me. If the fraternity is dying, you can get it elsewhere. The wars are pointless. Everybody knows they're gay. Everybody knows it's about bolstering these people's political careers. Quick conflict, showing off, taking them out, making them look good, then pulling out. Uh-oh, new group shows up. Let's go get them. Like, even we're leaving Afghanistan now, but then we've got the new OS on the Taliban. Let's go get them. Even though the people we were supporting in Afghanistan were morally reprehensible too. Like the Taliban at least ended shy boys, which was sexual slavery and prostitution between older men and young boys. And every soldier over there talks about seeing guys having sex with goats, raping boys, and they're supposed to be on our side. These are the guys who are going to respond well to liberal democracy because oh, my women weren't allowed to leave the house. It's literally impossible. And even the training you can get elsewhere. Like I had a guy tell me that he could teach a militia everything he learned in the military in about two or three weeks, which sounds ambitious to me, but I wouldn't know. So I'm just gonna take his word for it. But on the other hand, I'm very worried about a military that is fully staffed and politically on the side of our enemies. So then it's like, is that even possible? Because like we said, the infantry is almost totally comprised of right-wing patriots. So what if they just expand the foreign legion, right? What if they just open that up more and say, hey, enlist and we'll give you citizenship. That could be bad because people from other countries, particularly from the third world, aren't going to have nearly as hard a time turning against the enemies of the state as American citizens would. And even they probably wouldn't even have that hard of a time now, depending on who it is and how the culture continues to change, uh, both in terms of the military and the country as a whole, because they're trying to 
to actively discourage people like us from joining the military or staying in it. Like they can't outright purge it, just like they can't outright call for violence against us, but they can set things into motion that will achieve the same results. They're doing this with forced shots, forced mask mandates, they're changing names at the bases, erasing Confederate general names, they're breaking that bond. First it's the statues and the bases, Jefferson's gone, Lewis and Clark gone, renaming all the bases, they're having meetings two to three times a year going over what extremism is, how to find it in others, what organizations they can't be a part of, what's indicative of an extremist. But what they consider to be an extremist are purely right-wing people, never leftists. Only examples are young white dudes who are about this age. And at one point during one of the meetings I heard, there was this presentation and there was a captain up there who asked for examples. Someone said KKK, he said yes. Someone said Antifa and he like cringed at it, despite the obvious fact that the KKK doesn't even exist, whereas Antifa has active cells in every major city in the country and those god-awful recruitment ads. When those recruitment ads came out, you'd go around to the different rooms and see different clusters of soldiers, like what the f is this? Everyone in the company is like, are you kidding me? They were completely embarrassed to wear the uniform that day, I was told. And it's a total psyop. They want people like us to be out of the military. You don't belong here. That's the purpose of all of this. They want people like us to leave, to be demoralized. We own you. You're going to do our bidding. That's the point. You're going to get the shot. And even then, you're going to have to wear the cope shield. And if you don't, Article 15s, even though you said you wouldn't have to wear the cope shield if you got the shot. And if it's mandatory, they could potentially put you in military prison. Most realistically, they'd kick you out. And other than honorable discharge, so no veterans benefits, you have to report on all employment that you have that. So it kind of screws you for the rest of your life. So... Ultimately, with this whole thing, I think you really just have to evaluate it for yourself because the bad parts of it are that it encourages an unhealthy lifestyle, you're supporting and defending a country that murders a million of its children every year, and you're existing as the militant arms of a globalist pedophile network who wishes to enslave our nation's people. And what is good about the military, it's culture, that seems to be dying, so I don't know. The National Guard, I, I know they get a hard time, but you know, it might not be a bad idea. Like, right-wing states pulled theirs from Biden, and if they can establish a purely leftist national military, if we had right-wing militaries and state governments, that might help us, especially with like a national divorce, which is really the best option at this point. And even though the National Guard doesn't get the training uh, that the rest do, I'm pretty confident that right-wing patriots would be more lethal with that training than a bunch of leftists and third world imports would be with better training. But I don't know. Don't take this as gospel. I'm simply exploring ideas. I really think the bottom line though is that this all comes down to political representation. It's all downstream from that. Like the generals are selected by Congress. All the higher up leadership is politically selected. So you could have 90 right-wing colonels, but if the political leadership is leftist, they're gonna pick the few that are leftist too, even though they're in this you know extreme minority. That's why you have generals now talking about how diversity is our greatest strength. So. Everything flows top down. We have to change our political representation first and they would fix the military leadership. And that honestly would fix the military to where we wouldn't even have to worry about this anymore. Like if the top down guys in the military were our guys, the whole institution would change almost overnight, I've been told. So I guess those are my thoughts on it. They're trying to destroy the culture. The White House and DOD say that you can't report someone of the same gender for sexual assault or harassment anymore because they said it would be used to bully gay people. They shut down open prayer. They call it proselytizing. They want your social media. They want your emails. They're citing the NDA and battalion meetings claiming that you can arrest someone for speaking out against the federal government. All of this in addition to what we've already discussed. Then they're providing our supposed enemies with literal cash, equipment, etc., just to keep them in the fight. Here's a good example. When a Blackhawk goes down, down, there's a certain piece of equipment that you are instructed to take out before leaving it so it can't be used by the enemy. Even if it means using your water, phosphorus grenade, whatever, you make sure it's done. We did not do that with any of the equipment that we left behind. This was not a lack of planning. This was done completely intentionally. The lack of planning was the planning. Everyone I spoke with said that if they could go back, they would not join. They would find training elsewhere because the government you're contracting your body and life to hates you. They want you gone. And it recalls the old Sholzhenitsyn quote, we know they're lying, they know they're lying, they know we know they're lying, we know they know we know they're lying, but they are still lying. So what happens when the hostile and illegitimate state mobilizes its monopoly on violence? Every communist regime in history has purged the military of political opposition. Ours are no different. And as we said in the last video, everything that would need to be put into place for something really bad to happen is being put into place. But just know you will be held accountable. There are at least 75 million people just like us. We're not just gonna like disappear. Moreover, we have God on our side. We have goal line defense up at the gates. You guys are going to be humbled at his feet, whether you currently acknowledge it or not. I've been reading my Bible a lot more recently. 
I hadn't been reading it very much for a while. And my cope was telling myself, hey, isn't the greatest faith just putting total trust in it without even knowing what it says? That was the cope. But we're reading it for the first time in a while, reading it through 49 books in, still waiting for a miss. And I'm not going to find one. Everyone always asks for like a book recommendation list. I've got one on the website. But above all else, you really should just read the Bible. The entire truth of our existence is in that book. Like what else could be of greater importance? And if you've never read it, by the way, you don't get to brush off what I'm saying. No, you are not entitled to your eye roll yet. Read it, follow it, and you will notice your life gets better. It is literally the owner's manual to your soul, but you've got that cued for when you're done with how to argue against economic regulations for dummies. So there's good news and bad news. The bad news is that we're all going to suffer. It's going to get worse, worse than you and I are even comfortable imagining, and it's okay. We deserve it. This country deserves it. But the good news is that we're ultimately going to win. And our enemies who literally work for Satan and for Moloch, who are literally possessed by demons, are going to end up burning in hellfire for eternity. So that's kind of funny. I don't want to say I take pleasure in that. It's at least amusing. It sounds outlandish too, but that's the case, by the way. Like if you're a Christian and you read your Bible, that is what it says very clearly is the case. So in summary, study your Bible, keep your rifle by your side. And as long as you do that, you will be okay, regardless of anything that happens in between. Like in the end, you will be okay and we'll all make it. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so that you are notified in the event that I post, which is happening more frequently, as many of us are saying, and then of course share the video with a friend. Is it wrong that, I, I don't take pleasure in it, I just, like, it's not like a laughing thing, like, I find it funny, I, I sympathize with these people, and, and I, you know, I, I pray for them, and I feel badly, it's more of like a, you know, you could have had eternal salvation through Christ and you chose that? Like, what are you doing, dude? Ah, I don't know. It is a little fun. It's not funny. It's not funny. Hey, pray for your enemies. Even the communist furries who want to molest your children. Pray for them. Like, ser like that's what demonic influence is. I'm not crazy. I'm not. I'm not. I read my Bible. You should read your Bible. That's what it says. And it's funny too, because everybody always claims to read the Bible. Like, oh, I read the Bible. And it's like, you can tell because when you actually read it, you're like, they were right. Like the people who sound like the crazy Christians are actually the ones who actually read it and they're correct in, in what they're talking about. So yeah, read your Bible. Yeah. But we love the two minute outro. You want to see what's on the shelf? You can't really see it. I wasn't really sure what the angles of the cameras were going to be when I set the studio up, but there's some cool stuff on the shelf. It's actually, this is a die cast replica of the, the intro car. Oh, is the wheel messed up? What? The wheel's messed up. Someone tried to steal my wheel. On the old, the old Woody, I think this car was called, the old Ford. John Doyle and hang off, Tommy. And then we're back here. Hello, it never ends. It's a flat circle. The eternal heck off commie video. Okay, the three minute outro. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Poof.